the road to Oraba, a town at the border of Uganda, South Sudan, and the Democratic Republic of Congo, following a lead on the illegal lumbering and trade of timber from Ye River State, which borders Uganda. Teak is one of the most expensive kinds of hardwood in the world. It is in short supply. South Sudanese teak is part of the top-end strains of teak that can be found in this region. Market prices for a board foot of teak, which is about one meter long and half a meter wide, cost between $7 or 700 Kenya shillings for the lowest quality teak to $10 or 1,000 Kenyan shillings for high quality teak. Hundreds of shillings higher than locally sourced teak because of its quality and difficulty to obtain. The lumbering of teak is highly restricted across the world and there are very few natural teak forests left anywhere in the world. South Sudan has some of the oldest natural teak forests in Africa. Leads tell us that a senior member of the SPLA-IO plays a major part in that trade. And we're headed to meet an army officer from Uganda's army with knowledge of the border trade. The officer is part of a team that patrols the border, monitoring what goes in and out of Uganda. All right, wish me luck, eh? So what happened? The government of South Sudan have started complaining that we're not helping them. That maybe we're part of this business that is Uganda. We are conniving with the I.O. to plunder their resources, which fact we may not deny because they're passing through Uganda, although they do not end up in Uganda. Where do they go? Australia goes up to India, Vietnam, Teak, and Australia goes as far as India. How about mahogany? Mahogany? Some of it ends up in Uganda, others in Kenya. But the Teak and Australia, because they come as logs, they go to India, Thailand, and Vietnam. What we hear is that there's a Kenyan who is based somewhere in Koboko, who is the manager. A Kenyan? He's based in Koboko. He's, he's like the manager. That Kenyan is uh, conniving with the governor of I.O. for Ye River State. What, do you know his name? He's called Frank Matata. Frank Matata. He's based in Kampala. He's the governor. He's uh, South Sudanese. He's the governor for I.O. And a Kenyan? The Kenyan's name is Obiero. He's, he's the manager of a company. He coordinates with Matata. All the payments are made to him, to Matata. Obiero is just the manager of a company that does uh, cutting and so on. Matata is the SPLA IO governor of Ye River State, which the rebels have by and large controlled since the outbreak of conflict in 2013. I want to know what his role is in the illegal trade of timber and whether he personally benefits from this trade. To do this, I pose as a Kenyan businessman running a wood outfitting and furniture company looking for a big order to fill. Hello? Hi, Mr. Matata. Hello? Hello, can you hear me? Hi, I can hear you, yes, sir. Okay, um, yeah, I was saying my name is John Kiarie. Okay. Yeah, I'm the co-owner of a company called Out of the Woodwork. We're a high-end um, hardwood furnishings company that we're about to set up in Nairobi. I got, a, I got your contact from a colleague of mine. Um, and um, the reason that I'm calling is that I was hoping that I could uh, I could meet with you regarding um, a business a business uh, opportunity that I'm hoping that we can transact together. Okay, maybe what we do, I will be in Kampala probably by on the 21st. That will be on Saturday. Yeah, I think I'll be I'll be in Kampala on Saturday. Yeah. Let me up in Kampala, then we 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 see how to. How to, uh, how to do it. Uh, uh, how to, 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 to about it, yeah. Thank you very much. That's fine with me. All right, so I'll give you a call on Saturday. Thank you very much for calling back, uh, Mr. Matata. Uh, All right. Okay, thank you. Great. Let's meet in Kampala. Bye. Okay, bye. I get connected to SPLA IO spokesman Gabriel Lamb a close confidant of the generals 
and organized to meet him in Kampala. Gabriel. Hi. Fine, fine. Pleasure to meet you. Hey, All right. So, sorry for keeping you. I, no, I was going to buy a hat this, this heat. <laughs> you know, Nairobi is so cold. And this is the only hat that I could find. Okay. Now I look like a Congolese musician. No problem. We, we, we have tea. Enough. Uh, in one of our control areas. Yeah. Kejiko. 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 Uh, just close to here. Yes. But it's more closer and entry inside to Kejiko, you best fire uh, the Congo. You will have to go from here to Koboko, enter inside South Sudan. Okay. Bokolo, then uh, close by Congo, yeah. and you enter inside now. Uh -huh. Very quickly, he confirms that they have what I'm looking for and are willing to go into a forest that hasn't been touched since 2005 to get more teak. I inquire about whether General Matata has done this before and also ask how they would get illegally logged wood across the border. The Ugandan army officer I had met claimed that senior officers from the Ugandan army were involved in the trade. Gabriel opens up further. We have the we have some generals along the border. The okay. general in charge of the CMI. At the time of our conversation, the SPLA in opposition and the government were close to signing a peace agreement. I wanted to know whether they'd be able to guarantee my supply of timber if the agreement fell through. I want your guarantee that if there is no peace, we'll, we'll still, still be this. able to do this. We will still do it. After this, we agreed that I would wait to meet General Matata for a final agreement, but that in the meantime, he would broker a meeting between myself and other allies of General Matata in the business. A day later, Gabriel takes me to the depot where most of the teak, mahogany, and of zelia are brought to for onward shipment to Kenya and other parts of the world. Some of the timber you see here comes from South Sudan. How much of this is from uh, your territory? Sorry? This one I think, no, I think one more three quarters. Or it comes from your territory? From our area. From your area. No, I'm talking about the areas under your control. It's not clear how much of it is illegally logged, and the managers of the depot would have no way of knowing for sure if it was logged illegally. Gabriel, though, is confident that our timber will get here safely. A day later, he introduces me to two gentlemen, one of whom is Francis Dabe, a former member of parliament from Kajokeji, a constituency in the governor's state. Hey, how are you? Good, good. good. You? Not bad. You got a good cap today. Uh, yes, 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 I did. <laughs> uh, karibu, Karibu Kitty. Uh, how are you? Sorry. Nice, nice to meet you. Uh, hi. Sorry, gentlemen, you can sit down over here. Over a meal which I buy them, Dabe dominates the conversation. You were a minister. That was by then, but no, you know. Like, <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, you were minister yes. in the Kiri government. Yeah, by then, that was in 2015. What what ministry? Culture, youth, and sports. Wow. For the state. For the state. What you call a county? In, uh, ah, okay. So like the state ministry. Mm -hmm. okay, okay, okay. When South Sudan's Juba government realized that rebels were logging illegally to presumably fund their war, Juba complained to Uganda. And Uganda, in turn, tightened border security. Dabe explains to me how timber illegally felled in South Sudan is still able to make it across the border and who is involved. In the past, uh, as I say, when we discuss, we, we use it for our home. Yes. But uh, because of the relationship between myself and the president, yeah. he came with the rules. Mm -hmm. That uh, there are some logs that are coming from the operation yes, territory, mm. uh, which is not supposed to be uh, genuine. So they are not supposed to recognize that. So they started to founding uh, mm. those uh, logs. 
So what we did was recruit uh, our people also into the, the, the Sudan uh, government uh, uh, so that they are able to get for us those documents. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then we serve also our people who come to our We pay this man for them. Uh, pay them man for them. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Now I get so, you. Now I get you. you. Get me there. Okay, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Okay. Yeah, uh, anyway, yeah. keep going on. So, so yes. The moment you, you don't come with these documents, yeah. the National Police Authority of Uganda will take these goods. Will impound them. Okay. Okay. So now, what we do is we get authentic documents of the government of South Sudan. Yes. And we pay them the money. Mm -hmm. And then we come to that side, they seal also. Mm -hmm. The side of Uganda, they serve us with the documents. Once they have seen the witness of the documents, then they seal. Travel. And you travel. You travel. Okay. And then uh, what you also do is, you know, East Africa. Mm. Hey, your brother is your pocket. Yes. Okay. Hi, Afande. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm going. I'm going to Kampala. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Travel well. Yes. And you create a rapport between you. Yes. And the. Uh, Okay. What, what do those customs documents? As I claim that I'm looking to import 20 trucks of teak, I once again talk about security, at which point Gabriel jumps in, making clear the divide between the business of teak and the security oversight that the governor plays in the business. Once again, he claims that in Uganda, protection is just a phone call away. Yeah. Oh, he doesn't. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, uh, yeah. Here, yeah, we have people that cannot use One, uh, someone who was a regular person. That one, no matter what happened, he just allowed our phone. I think he just can't stay. And he's from the OP, the office of the president. Okay. Anybody else? We have one who is uh, in charge of the counter terrorists. These guys who put on black. Uh -huh. He is a major mm -hmm. and he is in charge of the airport. Mm -hmm. That one. So any phone call from him, mm -hmm. everything comes from that airport. Okay. Any place where these things okay. <laughs> this bad. All right. So we get guarantees there. So yeah. is that now where because the governor I assume is more security focused than then yeah. is that where the now side, yeah. We have uh, from the border side completely there's that uh, Region we call the RISO, the, 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 the regional security officer. That one and uh, the, the director for CMI. We calculate that one truck of teak will cost me four thousand five hundred dollars, or four hundred and fifty thousand Kenyan shillings to get into Uganda. As we're about to conclude, Dabe and Gabriel interject with a series of questions that tells me that there is a benefit to them and perhaps to General Matata as well. Yeah, we are discussing mm. this. Mm. And we are discussing this, uh, the prices on the mm. ground, mm. not the prices in Kampala. Yeah, uh, yeah. How do you see our appreciation? You know, this is what I mean. <laughs> I think this is the last bit of the, of the discussion. Yes, yes, which let's is pass, the most important. Yeah, let's first deal with this. Okay. To give us better wisdom. Mm. Mm. So on top of the four five. Yeah. Can you add one to become uh, five, five five? Okay. Per truck, yeah? Yeah, per truck. That's it. Given that I'm supposed to add $1,000 to the price of every truck as a bribe which will be delivered to General Matata, based on this discussion, for my 20 trucks, I am to give the General $20,000 or 2 million shillings for my trucks. Are you traveling back today? I think maybe tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning, eh? Because I'm so tired. Ah, yes. Okay. Traveling back again. Hey, yeah, that would be hard. Yeah. As they leave, we agree that to finalize things, a meeting with Matata himself will be necessary. All right, keep well, eh? All right, cheers. After a week of waiting, I finally get the call that he will be in town and we organize to meet again in Kampala. Our first meeting is a one-hour conversation in which I'm only able to record his voice. But in this meeting, he confirms everything that Gabriel has been telling me. They leave for another meeting, but I want the general to confirm yet again what his role would be. I place a call to Gabriel, who directs me to another hotel in Kampala, where they are. 
before long, Matata steps out to meet me. Hey boss. Yes sir. Hi, hi, hi. No, huh? yes, I, I spoke uh, I spoke briefly with my with my partner. Mm -hmm. And there are um, one or two things that we just needed to resolve. Mm -hmm. okay. I'll speak to someone. Uh, we can stand under the shield. Okay. Yeah. So there are one or two things that we needed to resolve. Mm -hmm. We're already essential. Yeah? Mm -hmm. But um, those two questions that you have, mm -hmm. the, the tick, mm -hmm. the one that you had wanted to give us, mm -hmm. how much is it? How, how many containers do you think it will be able to That thing is big. That uh, thing is the hoops mm -hmm. are like, uh, they keep them. I think the one hoop can take like maybe two containers. Yeah. And the ones I saw, these mm -hmm. big trucks, huh? mm -hmm. with the pudding. Yes. I think. The ones I saw along the road, mm. I think they are like seven. Mm -hmm. One hit, when they hit and the one hit like from here up to that building, uh, up like this, so, so they can take like two. Okay, so two containers. Eh? Two containers, yeah, like, to start with. and they are like seven hits. Okay. Which are like just stones, almost like this. Yeah, thing. yeah, yeah. Which are yeah. like big, it can be like this size. Okay. Uh, most of them are big. Yeah. But there are those that are uh, of that size of these uh, the the palm tree. Yes. Yeah, some of them are that size. Okay. Some of them are much bigger than that. All right. Yes. So we're Matata then confirms that there has been fighting between his forces and the SPLA over the same teak. To be able to even bring 20 trucks also. Okay. What actually pulled me to send the force to drive this guy off from there yeah. was because the trucks were doing massive, you know, lumbering there, yeah. which attracted our attention. Yes. Because the communities there were not getting. And of course it's your area. Of course it's our area. Yeah. Yeah. We want those things to be done in a responsible way mm. so that we can get money to offer services to these people. Mm. Yes. Okay. Then we get into the bribe. In our earlier meeting, Matata said that he would require $30,000 or 3 million shillings, up from the 2 million that Dabe had talked about in our earlier meeting days before. This was allegedly to bribe some three senior Ugandan officials for the wood to cross into Uganda. I asked him to lay this out again claiming that 30,000 may be too much for me to handle at one go. He agrees. Uh, 30,000 may be initially a bit on the, on the higher side, but we still want to do this. Mm. How much can we kind of think of that sort of like a go between so that we're able to... to what, what do you plan? Because mm. what I wanted for me is like the way I told you earlier on. Mm. When you have something, says about mm. meaningful that I can go into these fellas mm. okay mm. and set them up for some time. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm. You know human being is complex. Mm. You will not refuse mm. what you're offered him. Yeah. But having such like this also you cannot go with the two five thousand. Mm. They are going to see these tracks. Mm. I then ask him about exactly who the bribe would go to and he is very clear. I said a police guy, regional police commander, mm. regional internal security officer, and then the regional chief and some military intelligence officer. Those three are very important. Okay. They are the ones who control the area there. In West Man. Yes, you can do with these guys here, but they can block you at the border. So A third confirmation that senior Ugandan police, intelligence, and army officers from the West Nile region may be involved in the trade of illegally logged timber from South Sudan. At the time of this negotiation, the regional police commander of West Nile was Jonathan Muzinguzi. Emmanuel Mugisha was the regional internal security officer. Just three days after our conversation with Matata, Ugandan President Yoweri Museveni suspended Muzinguzi and fired Mugisha over the handling of protests after a parliamentary by-election in Arua, northern Uganda. I wrote to Uganda's police spokesman, Emilian Kaima, for a response from the force about the alleged involvement of these officers. He has yet to respond, in spite of saying that he would. So something sizable would still be in the region of maybe 30,000 still? Possibly, yes. That's how I'm looking at it. 
Yeah. You know, my problem here is, this is the that I used to manage. They are the people who is also. A third confirmation that senior Ugandan police, intelligence, and army officers from the West Nile region may be involved in the trade of illegally logged timber. We negotiate a little more, then he gives me his final offer. You know, 28. 28. 28, yeah, I think at least. Mm. Let me go and tell them about the two that yeah. will, this will, will, will something as time them. goes. Okay, yes, all right. I'm here, you find a way of the transcendent here. No. Mm. Would I be able to meet the uh, like Western Union or we what will be the Maybe we look to use that money from dollars. Mm. Uh, bank transfer. Bank transfer, I don't have a dollar account. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay, so then how do you do this? How do you do this? Maybe you can use Somali. Or I do uh, Hawala. Yes. Uh, what is it called? There's, there's one called Dahab Shield. Dahab Shield. Yes. Um, uh, what? What's the other name? Okay, I know Dahab Shield. Dahab Shield, there are many in Nairobi. Okay. Yeah, Dahab Shield can do. Okay. And uh, Amal can do. Okay. Yeah, I think those ones can do. But you said that's what I was telling you. Just tell me. Just tell me and then now we're hanging. No, for me, you know, I don't I no, don't uh, tack on to something. Don't 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 be humble. Just say. I just don't tack onto something. It is mm. you to see through your goodwill. Mm. If what I will be doing to you is okay with you. Yeah. How you will appreciate me should come from the bottom of your heart. Okay. Because you want to tell you that give me this, I will be conditioning you. Yes, yes. I don't okay. get that. All right. I don't do that. It should come from the bottom of your heart. Yes. See that what I'm doing to you is good. And you have facilitated me and I appreciate just like that. It should come from you. All right. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thanks a lot, Mona. Right. So now right. I'll talk and then now um, so I'll send it directly to you. Right? Um you can send to me or you can send to to maybe Lam. To Lam, eh? yeah. Lam is the only one here. Lam, Lam can handle that, yeah. 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 Okay. Yeah. All right. Lam can handle that, but if I'm still around, because sometimes I will go towards yeah. the west. Okay. Yeah, but we just want to say no problem. All right. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Eh? All right. Have a good one. But you, you call me first. I'll call you first. Yes. Okay. Great. Yeah. All right. All right. Sante. Thank you. His play at humility in saying that he will accept whatever I give him gives me the impression that, as an SPLA in opposition general, he is starved for cash. Throughout my time with these men, they've been insisting that they are coordinating the sale of illegally logged wood to help their community. But given the amounts they're asking for, it seems unlikely that the benefit of this business would go to the community alone. I wrote to Matata, Lam, and Dabe revealing who I am, that I secretly recorded our conversations, and asked them to respond to the evidence I had gathered about their roles in the illegal hardwood trade. Both Matata and Lam responded, claiming that I may be an impersonator working for their enemies. Matata went further to claim that my transcription of our conversation had twisted his statements and was full of lies. Dabe Francis did not respond. I get something says about mm. meaningful. Many of the residents of Kampala who use this route every day on their commute home probably wouldn't notice, but lying right in front of them in plain sight in this abandoned container depot is evidence of theft from South Sudan to fund a war effort that's been raging now for five years, specifically by the SPLA in opposition. In SPLA, in opposition-occupied areas, they cut down millions of trees of mahogany and teak and sell them on some going as far as India. And of course, war is good for business, meaning that there would be some Ugandan middlemen who are benefiting on this side of the border. But if you think that the SPLA in opposition is benefiting from this war, get a load of the government. Extensive interviews conducted with numerous people by the century confirm that this waterfront home, under construction on the shores of Lake Babugaya in Bishoftu, Ethiopia, belongs to Salva Kir. This is the first time the public gets to see these photographs. In Nairobi, I met with a security officer from one of Kenya's armed forces. 
Between 2012 and 2016, he protected Salva Kier's family. Every time Kier came into town, he noticed something peculiar about the luggage of his entourage. He used to carry bags of cash. They carried mostly euros and dollars. We would be sent to protect some of the people in this group who would carry it. It was a lot. I wrote to President Kier's official press secretary, Atenu Wek, seeking a response to these and other claims made. By the time of the airing of this documentary, his office had not responded to our questions. It is also natural of a phenomenon like this, when the country is at the capture of cartels and a group of uh, people who do not have a clear vision of the country. There is no any other outcome you would expect from their exercise of power other than plundering the resources, looting, oppressing the people, narrowing the space of participation. President Kier himself has admitted to the theft of billions of dollars from South Sudan. But people like Dr. Majak Dagot, a former minister in his government, would not believe him. In September 2018, just weeks after I had concluded my investigation, South Sudan's warring parties signed a peace deal. Salva Kiir and Riek Machar would again work together as president and vice president, but this time with three other vice presidents and an expanded government and legislature of over 450 people, one of the largest in Africa. The same people who led South Sudan back into war were back in charge. But where does this leave the common people? We are crying. This song is like a crying song. We sing this song so that so that our brother Salfa can really think of us. There are incredible odds against this. Not only has there not been reconciliation on the ground, but the profiteers in the region haven't been held to account. Expensive homes still stand. War criminals still roam freely. But like Joseph, Rose, and the many South Sudanese men, women, and children that I have met, I also hold out hope that this peace will last this time and that a fellow African nation will become a land of prosperity, not for profiteers, but for its people. <laughs>